Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to today's second half, and in with keeping with this Memorial Day tradition, we have some more military experiences with dogmen, cryptids, crawlers, just the evil of our planet. Before we get into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they really do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's second half, shall we? All right, everybody. Tonight, I have a guest and subscriber whose name is George. He served in the Marines, and he has a couple of encounters that he would like to share with us tonight. George, how are you tonight? I'm good, Jeff. How are you? I'm very good. I want to thank you for coming on the show, and thank you for your service to this great country we live in. Um, the floor is yours, my friend. Share away. All right, man. Thank you, and, uh, and thanks for that. that. That means a lot to us best, man. Um, I... Uh, I guess, uh, uh, to me, it all goes back to 1994. I was a young kid, 20 years old. I, um, 19, actually. I, um, I was fresh out of boot camp in the Marine Corps, and then I was shipped out to, uh, Camp in June, North Carolina, a little base called Courthouse Base for, um, uh, Combat Engineering School. So, you know, being from California, like the Central Coast in the, in, the, in the Pacific, it was a big shock to be in North Carolina where it's just trees everywhere. So the Courthouse Bay, Courthouse Bay, it's, uh, like I said, it's just mostly all trees, very dense. They, they, it seems like they just clear an area and they build stuff on it and it's just surrounded by trees. So I was probably, um, probably about a month into school. And um, and it was my time to uh, pull duty. So there's probably about four or five posts that had to be patrolled. And I uh, I got two days of uh, patrolling a, a lot, a big parking lot for all the uh, heavy equipment. So courthouse base, it's, it's uh, for combat engineering school, but they also have heavy equipment operators that train there. So there, there was a big parking lot with cranes, Humvees, five tons, and all that stuff. So that was what uh, I got two days of duty, and it was pretty easy. It was only from nine to eleven, so it wasn't bad. So what ended up happening is uh, my first night being there, and um, being young, being dumb, I decided to take one of these Humvees for uh, for a test drive. You know, so I got caught. I got caught uh, driving one of these Humvees trying to pick up one of my other buddies at the barracks. So my punishment was either get written up, get like an official write-up, or or do a whole week of duty, which I ended up taking. Um, so I got a full week of duty from 2 o'clock in the morning till 4. So those were like rough hours. So that was my punishment. So, um... 
the way the way that the parking lot was, like I said, it was everything surrounded by woods, and there's there was a fence that surrounded it. So, um, lighting the lighting. There was a big old. I remember there was a big old a big old light, like a floodlight, in the middle of the parking lot that pretty much lit the whole area. So after about, I remember the second night of being there. I start uh, seeing shadows in the woods. You know, as I was patrolling, I would see shadows. So, so one of the things that was very common surrounding Courthouse Bay was all these little trails for training. So there was machine gun pits that were dug up, and, and there were all these perimeters that were laid out for training. So I chalked it up as you know some. Marines doing some late night training because you would see these shadows kind of just, you know, 50 yards into the wood. You know, as far as I can see, there's just dark shadows that are moving about. And then I start seeing um, red lights, you know, which, which you know, is very common for nighttime uh, training. You know, they give us these flashlights with these little red lens. They put in a flashlight, and that's how you... Uh, you do a nighttime, you know, a navigation maneuvering. So that's what I thought. I thought it was just Marines training uh, with flashlights. So um, this, probably about the third night, you know, after seeing that stuff, and it wasn't all the time. It was just, you know, here and there. But the third night into duty, and I was really tired by then. You know, I was doing school from, what, like, seven or whatever till five or six. And then two o'clock in the morning at four doing duty. So I started, I started getting tired. So I was, I started telling myself this part just made me being tired that, that, that I was seeing these shadows. But now I was seeing this stuff inside the parking lot. And I remember it started freaking me out. I remember walking to like the center of that big floodlight on the parking lot. And I would just stand there because that's where I felt the safest. And I would watch dark figures. You know, jump on, jump on like a, a five tons or cranes or bulldozers, and kind of circle the circle the whole lot. So it kind of starts freaking me out. So um, that night during my patrol, uh, I found a van, a, a, a white van that was parked up against the fence and it wasn't locked. So I'm um, thinking, you know, I got for another hour left of duty. I'm just going to jump in the van and catch some Z's. So I uh, I jumped in the van and I I dozed off pretty quick. And I remember uh, uh, waking up to the radio. There was like something happening on the radio, like a crack, and I was hearing some some, some cross talk going on. It woke me up. So I started, you know, I started getting up and put my belt back on, and all I had was a was a baton stick and a, and a flashlight. That's all I had in my radio. And so I started getting myself together, and um, all of a sudden I start hearing stuff in the woods, you know, like uh, some footsteps and and some some branches that were breaking. So. I opened, I remember opening up the truck, that the back of the truck, and right in front of me were, were like five or six deer. They just showed up out of nowhere. They're right there up against the fence. And look at the, looking at them, it seemed like they were trying to push themselves right through the fence because they were scared of something. And then I looked in the woods and I saw the, the red lights, but, but this time the red lights were like 20, 30 feet up in the air. And these, these were these were like pair of light. It was, you know, no longer it was like one single flashlight. It was just all these eye shines, red. So I, you know, I still, you know, denial. I still told myself, oh yeah, these are Marines that are training. They're up there climbing trees, I guess. But then this, this feeling overtook me, like really, like fear, like, my ear, my, my ears kind of went um, through this phase where, like, I can hear like this, like, like sound. It's like it's like a it's like, it's like a frequency that just started like a kind of tick tock, tick tock. It was weird. 
So I started, I started getting scared. And then all of a sudden the, uh, the radio comes up and it was one of my, uh, it was the, the, the sergeant of the guard who, uh, who, who called me to tell me that I, uh, I was getting pulled from duty to be ready, you know? And by this time I'd already jumped back in the truck after, you know, being freaked out. And, um, sure, as soon as he said he was going to be there in like five minutes, I waited in that van until I saw him pull up, you know, in the truck. And this whole time I'm hearing behind me, you know, I'm just at a fence. I'm hearing uh, uh, movement. And then out of nowhere, the deer scattered. They, 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 they ran like an, on all directions, you know, they, they took off. And then I started hearing growling, you know. So I, uh, I took off. I got off the van and just took off and ran to the floodlight and waited for, for the uh, sergeant of the guard to pick me up. And um, on the way back to uh, the barracks, uh, we, we went and picked up two, two, two other Marines that were doing guard two, but one of them was really freaked out. And he was the only one that had an M16 with live rounds because he was actually uh, patrolling a, uh, the demo and the ammo building. So what, what ended up happening was he, he, I guess he had an incident where, where he, uh, he encountered something and he shot a couple of rounds. So that's what the whole fuss was about during the radio. And I guess it's a big thing to shoot any kind of ammo during on base without permission. So, so that, that, that was the end of my duty. They stopped duty for the rest of that week. And I guess just an investigation. And that was, that was the end of that. That's, I, I heard nothing else about it. So I go ahead and move on. Finish school and I went about my business, you know, just the Marine fleet thing. Then a couple of years later, to a corporal, I went back there to a courthouse bay to do German school, a little bit advanced of what the, the basic combat engineering school was. So I go back there, and um, and uh, part of the uh, part of part of the schooling was to uh, to uh, learn how to make these strong backs. That's what they call them. So, so, so you know what a military tent, like a big military tent looks like, right? Yeah. Something, something that would, you know, sleep a whole platoon, like 40 Marines. Well, the strong back is pretty much the skeleton, the inside, it's the framing and the flooring. That was my dog. So I, um, so I, uh, um, that's what we're doing. We're doing a, uh, um, strong back, uh, Training, building these these strong backs, and one of those one of those days during the week, we um, there had to be a couple of us that that had to stay back and clean up the shop, you know, clean up the throw the tools and stuff like that. So there was four of us that volunteered for like two or three days to uh, to clean up, and so during that time we played some we played some spades and had a couple of beers, and um. We were, we were, we were, the table was, was right there in the middle of the strong back with a little window next to us. And there was a fence that was right on the other side, maybe like five feet away from the strong back. And, um, animals would pass right through there. I remember a deer passed one time and then there was a coyote to pass. And then there was one of, one of the Marines, I forgot his name, but anyway, she had the, the habit of, uh, as the animals were, were walking from front to back of, this, uh, of the building, he would run towards the back and get to like the little porch area and just jump out towards the fence and try to scare him. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty funny, you know? And he did, he, did, he scared a couple of deer. But I remember one time we were sitting there and from the peripheral, I see a wolf. And to me, it was a wolf. You know, on fours, on four legs. And I'm like, what? A wolf here? And um, he gets up again to do the same thing, right? And he's, you know, he was way ahead of us. He ran, gets to the back, and then he jumps. And I guess, uh, I didn't see this part because I was behind him. 
but I guess the wolf stood up and he was like, he says this thing was like 10 feet because he was taller than the fence. And he, I think he launched at the fence, that thing launched at him. And I, and I guess uh, the, the, the wolf or the dog man, which I, I now know to be, rattled the fence. Like, and the dude, the dude passed out. When we, when we got there, she was laying down and the dog man had, we, we saw, we caught the tail of him. We caught the, the, we caught him as he went into the woods. But this thing was big, you know? Was I still on, didn't put it together, you know? Was he on all fours got, when you guys saw him? Yeah, he was, he was, he, he was on all fours okay. running into the woods. Okay. And this thing was like completely black, 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 black. It was just a black animal. And to, and, and to me, because I, I, I just saw him on, on fours, and he seemed like big. To me, he seemed like a big wolf. So, um, so, that, so, that, so that was it, man. The, uh, uh, the uh, Martinez, that was his name, Martinez. He had a hard time with that, man. I remember, uh, I remember he had to go home. Because uh, he couldn't, he couldn't be at school anymore. He, he hit hard time with this, and all I got from him was that the thing stood up and and growled at him, and it launched, it launched itself at him, and the only thing that stopped him was that fence. That's all he remembers, and um, that was it. He he uh, he went back home, back to to his unit. So that was that was that was that was it, man. That was my 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 first two encounters, man, and. I never thought about it, you know. To me, it was just something that happened and weird, I guess. It's not like a... Uh, right. Can you hold on for a second? Yeah, yep. Uh, 30 plus years, you know, until beginning of this year. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, I had a, a, a big friend, his name was Mike. We both served together. Um, we went at the same time, we went to school together and, um, basically did our whole enlistment together. You know, I decided to get out and go to college. He decided to stay in cause he loved it. So he, um, so, so he did that. And afterwards he, um, he went into, uh, uh the private sector, like private security, um, Blackwater type of security. So he he did that, and he um, he was able to to make a lot of money. Those guys make a lot of money. So he um, he bought a ranch of all places, in North Carolina, and he's half and he's half retired. He um, he um, I think he works maybe a, a third of the year, and then the rest he's at home. But he, uh, I've been in touch with him the whole time, you know. So. He calls me up and he um, he wanted me to help him put together a remote um, telescope, something you can operate from anywhere in the world, you know. And, and um, so I had I took a week off work and I went there and we did that. It was a cool project, man. We put this uh, telescope together with a uh, with cameras and all that cool stuff. We even put a drone. We even we even like a program a drone to do like a, a certain. Um, pattern of, uh, of uh, like perimeter flyover and then go back to his little docking station. So this took us about four or five days. And then um, a Saturday, the Saturday that week, we, um, we, uh, we were doing some shooting. And one of the things I loved about the Marine Corps is all the shooting we did, man, like shooting all the 50 cows, the, the saws, the, all the, all the, all those cool. Mark 19 and all that stuff. So one thing he has is a lot of weapons. You know, he's in the he's in he's in security forces, so he has a lot of weapons. Some stuff that I don't think it's legal, but he has all that stuff. So the whole week was cool because you know I'll be out there working on the telescope, and I have a you know an AR or a, or a Desert Eagle, and I just start shooting at stuff. So it was cool. So that Saturday. That Saturday, we were supposed to meet up with one of his buddies who also bought a ranch nearby. And um, we were supposed to meet up with him because he, uh, a friend Mike put a uh, IR scope on on his, on his sniper rifle. 
So we were going to do some siding on it. And um, we, were, we had set up a, um, a target, like a watermelon with a scope, to try to duplicate that, that famous shot that Horace Hatchcock did, you know, his famous green sniper who shot, who shot another sniper to the, to the scope right into the eye. So, you know, we try to duplicate that. So we put, we put, a, we put a watermelon out there and a um, couple hundred yards out there with a scope. And uh, I remember I was out there, you know, just taking some shots when I see a deer. They kind of just, to me, it didn't seem right the way it was walking. It kind of stumbled, you know, to my, um, near, near the watermelon, near our target. And I'm like, I'll check this out, Mike. It's a deer. So he, t- he grabs his, uh, grabs a rifle and goes, oh, yeah, that's it. And then before I knew it, he shot it. <laughs> so he shot this deer. So we walk over there. I, uh, I just, for some reason, I had a weird vibe going on. I just didn't feel right, you know? And then the deer had, like, this cyst on the, on, um, you know, one of the hind legs. And this thing was the size of a, almost a damn baseball, man. It was just a big cyst. And my friend Mike gets his knife and he pokes it. And all this pus just, like, squirts everywhere, you know, all over my leg, my pant leg. Grossed me out, man. It was it was just nasty. So I um I'm walking over to the to his truck to to uh, my gym bag was in there and um, I had some sweat, so I went over there to change. And this whole time I was there, the whole week I was always carrying a Desert Eagle because it was you know it's cool. He had extra weapons, so I always had a Desert Eagle. And that time I didn't take it with me, so I walk over to the truck, which was probably about. 200 yards away from where Mike was. And I remember uh, um, getting the gym back out and I was getting ready to drop trout right there and change, but I'm like, no, what if what if Mike's friend shows up and he's got a, a girlfriend with him? I better jump inside the, the truck and he had a shell. He had a shell. And I, I jumped inside the back of the truck and I was changing. And all of a sudden, man, I... I got, I get that, that weird, everything went silent and like, kind of like, it just kind of like a, this fear kind of like t- took over, man. And I don't understand why I'm sitting there, you know, halfway, you know, my shorts halfway on. And all of a sudden I, I feel the presence of something like right on, on the other side of the truck. There's something there, you know, and I don't, I, and I, and I, for some reason I did not want to look up and see, but something was there. So I thought it was Mike's friend. So I'm like, hey, man. His, his nickname was Slimer. So I'm like, hey, Slimer, uh, it's me, man, George. Um, uh, I got your sniper rifle right here, man. So I started talking to him, and, you know, nobody was talking back. But there was a figure right there. I can just see, like, the dark outline of it. There was, um, like, a dogs to me I thought they were dogs they were just you know jumping around circling the truck so that's why I thought it was his friend I'm like oh he probably brought his dogs with him um, but but nothing there was no communication going on so I uh, I, I I had to look so um the way that the way that camper sh- the, the shell was it had one of those windows that had those uh you know you know those windows that have uh they're broken into like three pieces of glass you know and and they're, uh, you can open them all three at once. You can slide them, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, so, so so that's the kind of window it was. And it wasn't that big. It was probably like, I don't know, maybe like 30 inches long and 20. So I, I look, and all I see was black, like fur, right? It was, it was like, like fur. And it's dark, it's like dark, dark, black as, you know, it was plain daylight and this thing was so black that it, it just, uh, it was almost like camouflage, you know what I mean? It was just weird, it was just black and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, maybe it's a bear. And I'm, and I'm trying to look. All I can see was just fur and then I kind of, I kind of dip down and I look at the very corner of that window and that's when I see, uh, uh, eyeball and I started to kind of see kind of, kind of kind of put things together and it was um can you imagine a, a what 
one of those one of those doll houses. You know what I mean? Like maybe like a three foot doll house has has a window, and then you're gonna kind of look inside. You kind of crouch down and look. Yep. That's what it was doing. It was kind of crouching down and looking down at me. So it's so it's so his face was kind of away from me, but up in that corner of the window, and it was a like a yellow orange eye that was looking at me. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what this thing was, man. I'm just looking, I'm going, what? I'm trying to process what's going, what is this thing? And then, um, it moves. It kind of tilts, it tilts its head, and that's when I see the snout. I see the snout, and it's, it was like a shark, man. It had teeth, like, it almost seemed like it had three rows of teeth, man. It was just lots of teeth, like, that, uh, it was just like way too many teeth. I don't know how they fit in this thing's mouth, you know? And it looked down at me, and then it really crouched down, and that's when I saw both eyes. And this thing is like, I don't know if it's grinning or whatever, but, but the teeth are all out, and like it's mouth is kind of all the way back on both sides and then it's drooling and then it um oh, man this is, this is where I have a hard time um take your time it's alright uh, it, it gets it gets it's, it gets it's finger it, and it's a finger man it's, it's not a paw or anything. It, it's like a finger and it and it puts it um those, those windows are slightly cracked open and it gets like a finger, and this, you know, the only thing I can think of is like a honey backer. You know, honey backer's got those black fingernails, yeah. like a hand like that. It, it takes its fingers and it it runs from from one end of the of the window to the other. You know, underneath one of the one of the glasses like that. And it's doing that. And this point, man, my heart is just beating. And you know, mind you, I have a uh, I have a fifty. I have a I have a sniper rifle right here next to me. You know, I have this you know, throw in the magazine, you know, and but you, you, I wasn't thinking of that, man. It was, I was just frozen and this thing is running his finger back and forth on that, on that, on, on that glass, man. And it's, and I can see the, um, like little powdery stuff that he was scraping off the glass. And the whole time he's looking at me and he's, he's grinning. He's grinning. And, um, and all I can all I all I can do is, is just sit there and and I can move. So then I, um, it seemed like it was forever, man. So finally, I I just happened to I had the keys in my hand for some reason, and I I, I hit the, the the emergency you know the alarm button. Yep. And and it just that's all I remember, man. I hit the alarm button and the thing just like I pissed it off, man, because it just like. It growled at me like, and, you know, it was like, I can smell its breath. I can feel like everything. This thing was about four or five feet away from me, you know, and it, and I felt everything, man. It was like, it went through my body and my chest and then it resonated inside of my organs, you know, that, like, and I did it, I blacked out, man. I passed out, you know, and I, I woke up and, um, Mike was there and he's like yanking the keys off my hand because I had the Kung Fu grip on the keys, you know, and he ripped them off and he's on his cell phone with someone. He's like, what I remember him saying was, the bitch is back. The bitch is back. You know, and, and that was it, man. I was mm -hmm. in and out of consciousness for the next couple hours. Wow. And he took it back to his place and, um, and it was a blur, man. I got home. He, he put me on a plane. And I got home. Uh, I don't know if it was a Sunday. I think it was a Sunday. I got home and 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 the weird thing is, I just you know, it was, the whole week was a blur, man. It was a blur. I didn't even know how I made it through through a week's a week of work. You know, thank God I worked from home. I was doing technical support from home. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to physically go anywhere. But I ended up. I, I eventually ended up getting laid off because I couldn't perform. I could not. I could not do my job, man. I could not concentrate. I could not concentrate. I. Uh, 
and it's black and laying on the on the couch or dozing off, I would wake up and and I was like pretty much laying on this beast, you know. Yeah. That's the that's what I that's what I remember having the hardest time with, man. Is I couldn't have I couldn't find a spot anywhere in my house where I felt safe. And my house has like thirty windows, you know. So windows freak me out, and um. So I I I, I stopped re- replying to emails. I started, you know, I wasn't doing my job, man, and I got I got laid off, and um, which was you know that's what it was, and I just I was just I was out of it, man, for about a, about a month, and then I finally uh, I called Mike, and I'm like, dude, what happened? What what's going on, man? Because I'm have what was that thing? And um and um. And that's when he told me, you know, what's going on on his property. And it turned out to be a, a dog man. He said, it's a, it's a dog man, some kind of werewolf. And I'm like, what? I just couldn't, I couldn't process it, man, for like another month. I'm like, we need a werewolf. Werewolf. Like a werewolf? He's like, yeah, man, it's a werewolf. And, um,. And I just couldn't, you know, it's not, it's not in my world, you know, I'm werewolf, you know, and probably took me, uh, probably three months, man, three months to, um, to, um, start, you know, getting back into reality, you know? Right. Yeah. It's PTSD, man. Yeah, I think I do, man. It's, it's, it's. I still have nightmares for once in a while, but it's not as bad as it was, man. Like, my wife bought me a French bulldog last year for my birthday, and you know, French bulldogs have those ears, you know, like the Batman ears. Yeah. And I also have a Shiba Inu who also has Batman ears, and that, and when the lights are off and you see the ears, man, that would freak me out, man. I just pass out, man. I would just. Like uh, I guess they call it a, they call them um, um, night terrors when you just just pass out and you you paralyze and you can't move. Sleep paralysis and night terrors. Yes. Yep. That's what happened. That was happening to me, man. Just by seeing my dogs in the dark or waking up on this couch. So you know, my wife, dude, I love her, but you know, she's a. She's a math teacher, you know. To her, everything is logic right. and data and proof. So she, 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 she knows that I, I saw something traumatic, but she does not, you know, believe it's what it was. So that's as far as I can go there, you know, as far as support. Right. But she does support me, and she's with me. But she just doesn't fully accept the fact that what about, what it was. You know. What about your friend Mike? Um, we're not talking to him about this, you know. And yeah, you know, um, I talked, I talked to him, and um, uh, he he went on to tell me, you know, the history of of, of his ranch. He said he bought this ranch, and um, from a from an older gentleman that passed, and uh, his son, which his son was not a spring chicken, his son was like seventy. Also, you know, he said his son came over and like. And came over to give him the keys to all the up to the sheds and all this other all these other you know um, meat lockers and stuff like that. And he told him that, hey man, the world is not what it was anymore. There's no there's no longer uh, this is the comment that he made. There's no longer just the big man. There's other stuff. Hmm. My buddy was like, I, he didn't know what to say to that. He's like, okay, but he said that. Um, Long story short, that that there was a, a Bigfoot and a Dogman that that um, I guess were like partners. They were always around the the, the ranch, you know, and, and doing what they do, you know, and going around the windows. And but these were he didn't get like a he didn't get like a like a bad vibe from them, you know. He he thought they were just pranksters. Cause they would move his, you know, his tools around and 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 just do little stuff like that. It wasn't anything like uh, anything that was uh, you 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 would you know anything dangerous or anything that would you feel threatened. Right. 
you know, and um, I guess one 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 week um, things changed, man. It was like a different howling, like a different. He said he said he, said, he would hear the he would hear the Bigfoot make screams or whatever the noises they make, and the the dog man would return it with like a little howl. Yep, or whatever. But one time he said that there was something else, like a bigger, stronger how that he started hearing. And the forest, he said the forest was restless, and there was like back and forth running, like people, it was like a bulldozer out there. And he said that he got like a, like a really strong vibe that it wasn't safe. So he, mm-hmm. he took off, man. He, he went to his mom's for about a, a week or two. And, um, he said that when he came back, it was always a uh, like a bad presence that was there, and he no, he never saw that the, the Bigfoot or the other dog man anymore. It was just one big dog man that that I guess uh, one time just stared him down. I guess uh, he showed up and and he said he parked his truck and this thing was right there like next to the shit, just looking at him. And he said, this thing was huge, man. He said, this thing was like 11 feet tall, man. And, and he, um, he called his buddy, man. He called his buddies that were security with him. And, and according to him, he didn't want to tell me too much. He didn't want to tell me too much. Um, but I guess, uh, I guess one of his friends had experience with this thing. And the guy shows up with like three or four of those uh, Turkish Turkish dogs, man. I don't know if they are like big can- candles and tangles. With the big Turkish sheep dog, man. That's what they say. up with like three or four of them. And he, um, he shows up with them. And I guess they, I don't know if they, ch- I don't know if they chased him off or not. They chased off this thing and and he was a uh, he was a uh, um, like dog man free for about a year. Like uh, this thing wasn't around anymore. Right. Till right. till 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 I came over, you know. Wow. And um, when, and, and when, that was it. When you saw it, or did your friend? Did you did you see a tail, or did your friend mention if it had a tail? Um. Like I said, I was in the, I was in the back of that, that the bed, right, man. So I only had that little it. window. I only okay. had that little window to look out, so I didn't see the tail. Okay. I didn't see the legs. All I saw was like, pretty much like his left shoulder and just the face, kind of his chest, and then the snout. Because like, he was kind of dipping down to look down at me. And that's how big this fucking thing was, man. He dipped down right. to look at me, and like my friend drives a Raptor, you know, his big old lift, yeah. you know, so. So all I saw was the eyes, man. The eyes just was like, the eyes just was, man. I was scrolling through a Netflix the other day, and there's a movie, uh, uh, I think it's called Lucifer. And the, the picture on that, it's got those, those same yellow eyes, man. They remind me a lot of this thing, man. They're just, they're yellow, but you can see like, the, you can still see the pupils inside there, right? Like mm-hmm. a... Like like a like a wolf, man. But it's like yellow, yellow orangey. Right. And that's that's the whole view I got with the snout. And then when it dipped down more, I saw the ears, you know. And this head, man, the head was like it was bigger than a big cow, man. Like a a, a head that big. Right. George, we're we're coming up on time. Um. I do want to talk to you after uh, I'm done recording. Is there anything that you'd like to say um, before I have to end the recording? I know you wanted to reach out to other Marines to see if yeah, you saw anything. Well, yes, yes, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, just, I, I just know that um, Camp, Camp of June, Courthouse Bay, I was kind of looking at, looking at Google Maps. And I know, I know that not far from Courthouse Bay, there's a, uh, there's a game land that's not far. So, you know, now that I'm doing research on this, on these animals or whatever they are, I know that they, uh, they like water, they like game lands. And 
So I was thinking this is a, a, a breeding ground for these things, man. And I'm sure there's other Marines that have been stationed in Camp of June that might have had a, a sighting or two. I just wanted to know if, if, they, if there's some Marines out there that have sightings in Camp of June, man. Like, drop, drop a comment or something. And yeah. I'd like to know more about it because I'm pretty sure I wasn't the only one. Me and Martinez weren't the only ones that saw this, these things. Right. All right, guys. So if if you were at Camp Lejeune and you did have some sort of sighting, either drop a comment or send me an email and I can send George that email. That way he can get some clarification. George, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, don't hang up because I want to finish our conversation. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Um, on the show tonight. Thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed today's second half as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance to share their experiences, ideas, and theories judgment-free. Thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it just may help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.